You're listening to the Casting for Fun podcast, the show that talks about entertainment, sports, music, and inspirational stories for all to enjoy. We're glad you could join us today. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Now, here is your host, Albert Pineda. Welcome, everyone, to the Casting for Fun podcast. I am your host, Albert Pineda. And for this week's episode, I'm going to be having a conversation with my my buddy, uh, Stephen Cable, about his family's history with owning an airport here in Upland and several other topics that interest us too: the movie Top Gun, Dodger Talk, uh, Star Wars Celebration News, all good stuff with uh, my conversation with Stephen. Before I get to Stephen, though, I did want to take this moment to acknowledge the, the passing of Andrew Fletcher, the uh, founding member and keyboardist for the, pan- the band Depeche Mode. If you've been following my, my podcast for the past uh, several weeks, you know that I'm a huge fan of music. I absolutely love that band in particular. They're my favorite band. If you were to ask me, I could say without hesitation that, yes, they are, in fact, my favorite band. And I was introduced to them by my older brother, Fernando, when I was a young, at a young age, and I've loved them ever since. So it, it's heartbreaking. It's, it's uh, devastating for the fans, devastating for his family and friends, obviously. Uh, no word as to what the Pesh Mode is going to be doing in the future. Uh, I would imagine they probably had some new material, maybe a tour in the plans in the works before the, his tragic passing. I'm not sure what's going to happen now. But if it is the end of the Pesh Mode, I am grateful and happy that I got to see him in concert twice. I uh, was really hoping for another time so I can take Allison. Uh, but again, understanding the circumstances, it could be that it's maybe in the band's best interest to um call it a day and this uh enjoy reflect back on your career and enjoy your family and loved ones at this time so again rest in peace to andrew fletcher uh thank you for the memories thank you for the music and i'm grateful okay thank you so without further ado here is my interview with uh, stephen cable joining me now on the casting for fun podcast is my good buddy stephen cable stephen how are you tonight doing real good albert how are you uh, doing well. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Good. It's been a uh, good week. So yeah, good times with the family. In fact, some of those times are spent with you and your family. So it was, it was open house and some dinner. It was pretty good. Yeah. Very good. Very good. So, so thank you for coming on the podcast. Uh, I appreciate it. I always just love chatting with friends uh, about random topics, things that interest me. And of course we're more than uh, willing to, to hear anything you wanted to share as well. So again, open conversation, just anything you want to bring up just for fun is totally fine with me. Perfect. Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. Cool. Cool. So, so I mentioned to you earlier, I wanted to discuss uh, the airport, which yeah. is really cool that for me that your family actually owns an airport here in our city of Upland, which is really awesome uh, to talk about the movie Top Gun, uh, the, the original, the 1986 one, sure. uh, yeah. the Dodgers, of course, the mutual share love that we have for the same baseball team. And uh, some Star Wars celebration news, if you're interested in chatting about that as well. Yeah, we can do that for sure. Very cool. Very cool. Ooh. Okay, so first and foremost, let's go with uh, the airport. All right. Uh, excuse me. Okay, so uh, I, I found it fascinating to hear that your family owns the airport. I mean, when we, Allison and I moved here back in 2017 is when we moved here to Upland. And I remember when the early days living here, like seeing the planes come in really low and thinking, oh, sure. wow, it's really low. Oh, because there's an <laughs> airport right, right over by where we live. Uh, and I would imagine some of our uh, ward members who live close by or a little bit north of us off of Benson, like uh, Kelly Janice, she probably sees them all the time. For sure she would. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so so tell me the story. How did that actually come about that your family would actually own an airport in the city of Upland? Yeah, it's pretty unique, actually. So um, it all started back with my great grandfather. Um, his name's Dewey. And um, just to give you a little bit of background on him, uh, he was born back in 1897 in Dysart, Iowa, and he never really had an interest in aviation, which was funny. Um, he was working on the farms back there and enjoying life in that way. Um, but his brother, John, uh, got super into aviation. Um, he did all kinds of things aviation wise. Uh, he flew for airmail. He flew for uh, the military. He flew for Douglas aircraft. He did all kinds of things like that. Um, so Dewey, he managed farms for a, a long time in Iowa. And one of the owners of the farms he managed was like, Hey, you're doing such a great job. I have this orchard out in California in uh, the Kellogg Hills. I'd like you to go out there and manage it. So he came out here and th- his brother, John, was out here flying for Douglas Aircraft at the time. And so he would fly over to Kellogg Hill 
and there was a landing strip there and he'd pick his brother up and they'd go flying for a long time. And that's really where Dewey's interest in aviation started. And so uh, he started to get the bugs, start, he got his pilot's license. And then uh, sometime after that, I'm not sure the exact time, uh, he started managing the Fairplex. And then when the war started, uh, the government took over the Fairplex because it became a, a military vehicle storage uh, facility and also a prisoner of war camp for uh, the Japanese. Mm-hmm. And so he, he lost his job and he was like, well, what am I going to do here? And so he, with his aviation love now, he was like, well, what if I go start my own airport? So he took out a loan and he bought 80 acres here in Upland and he graded out our runway and that's where we're at. It all started right then and there. And we've been there ever since. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So it's gone through the family then are, are, are everyone, your, your dad down to you all pilots as well. So I'm not a pilot, um, okay. but all our family members have worked at the airport. So um, Dewey and his wife, Maude, uh, they're right there building the airport together. Mm-hmm. And their are four kids. Um, my grandfather, Paul, who's the oldest, um, Walter, uh, Roger, and Millie. And all of them had different parts in the airport. Um, my, my grandpa um, ended up managing it and running it um, most of my life. And uh, his brother, Walter, started at the maintenance shop here at the airport. And then his brother, Roger, actually started Cable Commuter, which was a commuter airline here in the Southern California area. And it became really successful, super successful. They had 14 airplanes and he ended up uh, selling it off to Golden Eagle. And he went off to live in Hawaii and he's been there ever since. And he's the last uh, member of the second generation of Cable family members. And so... Um, and then my dad got involved, his cousins got involved, and it's just gone through the family ever since. Oh, very cool. Very cool. So who's managing the airport now then? So we still have um, four of us working there now. My dad's part-time, his cousin's part-time, and then myself and my brother. Um, but we've always hired out a non-family member as an airport manager to kind of oh, okay. keep the peace and kind of keep the family from really fighting and getting at each other. Okay. Um, and so... He's there to manage their, uh, the day-to-day operations. I'm, I'm the, the assistant manager, so I'm there all, also running the day-to-day operations. Um, so that's kind of how it's set up. Oh, okay. Very cool. So that actually, I have a question about that. I wasn't Absolutely. planning on asking this, but now that I, I actually piqued my interest with this. So um, the, the way the airport would work for a, a privately owned airport, it would be different from a commercial airport, right? So not the same way that you don't have to do the same schedules like LAX does. So how exactly does it work? Or what is the, the day-to-day routine work for running the airport? So it's much different. So um, the private airport, it's all privately owned airplanes by um, different customers. So we don't have any commercial flights in and out of the airport. It's all rec- recreation flights. Um, we do have schools at the airport um, to help, you know, teach people how to fly. So that's our main source of traffic at the airport is all lessons and, and learning how to fly. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, the main source of our revenue is all from hangar rentals. So we're almost a rental business uh, and kind of, kind of like what you do. We rent space. Oh, okay. Um, and so that, that's where our main source of income comes from. We just rent hangar space, tie down space for the aircraft. Um, and then we sell fuel and that's, that's where all our income comes from. Oh, okay. Very cool. Very fascinating. Okay, so have you gone off to, I mean, you've had the chance to fly in planes. If, if not yourself flying itself, you've taken off from the airport and landed there, right? Yeah, absolutely. So my dad and brother are both pilots. Uh-huh. Um, I've flown with both of them. Um, they both got their license when they were 16 years old. And when I was in high school going through stuff, I was really into sports. I played two sports in high school. And so I never really took the time to go and do it. Mm-hmm. And it takes a lot of time and money to get your license. And so I just haven't set that time or money aside to do that. Uh-huh. Um, but one of these days, if I can convince my beautiful wife to let me do it, I'll, I'll, I'll get my license one of these days. Oh, okay. Very cool. That was <laughs> going to be my follow-up question. If you had desire to someday learn. I do. I do. Okay. I, absolutely. You know, being a cable family member, it, you know, it's kind of a rite of passage to get your license. You got to do it. And since, you know, I'm there running the airport. It's always good to have that background, too, of knowing how that works for when pilots come in and have questions. Um, it's useful in that way, f- for sure. So one of these days I plan on doing it. 
Oh, okay. Very cool. Very cool. So I'm assuming then since you grew up around planes and your family, obviously as well, and you've had pilots in the family, uh, if the family has thoughts of like, you know, when you get to see aviation depicted in movies and television, like, is it all Hollywood or is it actually pretty accurate or, or how do you, does your family enjoy movies such as Top Gun? Yeah. So I enjoy those movies for sure. Um, and Top Gun does a really good job aviation wise. I feel um, one of the reasons they, it is well done is because the flying por- portions are all real flying. And mm-hmm. so that, that really helps with that aspect of it. Um, and it, other parts, other movies, you know, sometimes we'll see stuff that's not completely accurate. You know, you can look at the movie airplane, obviously <laughs> not going to be really accurate, but a yeah, really yeah. funny <laughs> movie, you know? Uh-huh. Um, but Hollywood does a pretty good job with aviation because they do actually use airplanes most of the time when they do stuff. So, um, and that's one of the best things about Top Gun is they actually did use F-14s in the movie and it it really helps with that reality aspect of flying for sure. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, so uh, I wanted to actually talk a little bit about Top Gun because I mean, I absolutely love the movie to this day. Uh, saw it when I was little, th- thinking it was really cool. You even played the the Top Gun Nintendo game, which was yeah. a really blast to play. <laughs> um, so, and then just recently, Allison and I took the time to actually watch it because I think we are planning to go see Top Gun Maverick whenever we can. Yeah, but, I have to uh, go see that one. So, uh, doing a little research about the movie, in fact, I mean, with me doing podcasting as frequently as I do now, I found came across a podcast. This is really cool. That uh, speaking of airplane, it's actually taken the title from one of the jokes of the movie. Uh, Surely you can't be serious podcast. Yeah. <laughs> is the name of it. Uh, they did a whole episode just detailing uh, Top Gun. Okay. And, I mean, we could do a whole episode just talking about it. But one yeah, aspect sure. that I thought was really fascinating about the movie was that uh, they hired a, a professional or actually one of the actual instructors from the, the real life uh, Top Gun school in Miramar, uh-huh. yeah. which was interesting to learn that it actually is a real school. Not, yeah, not just absolutely. Made up for Hollywood. Nope, it's not. Um, and at this particular uh, uh, individual had actually been a uh, naval aviator and had done flight combat, mm-hmm. number of cool missions. Uh, yeah. His name is Peter Pettigrew, which is really interesting. If, you, if you're a fan of the Harry Potter series, you'll recognize that name immediately because that's oh, okay. one of uh, the, <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, Holly, who probably is listening, maybe she may recognize Peter Pettigrew, but. Uh, it was one of uh, James Potter's, Harry's dad's friends who betrayed him. To, uh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, think I never it, got into the Harry Potter stuff. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't know that. But yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if, if you're a Harry Potter fan, you definitely recognize yeah, that. Name. Absolutely. But Peter Pettigrew is a real life uh, individual who was hired to be as a, a, a consultant for a technical consultant on the movie to make it as authentic as possible yeah and uh his contribution to the movie was really interesting so apparently in the movie uh goose was supposed to die because of a uh in-air crash okay he fought fought against that he i said no 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 i mean these guys are experts they're the professionals that's never going to happen so they told him hey in the movie uh, the producers uh jerry brookheimer and his partner told him hey goose has to die uh, but what do you suggest we do? So I guess he knew of an actual accident that happened before. Uh, so again, I mean, you might know this a little better than I do, but I was doing some research. I guess uh, he had mentioned that there was an instance where, let's see if I can look at my notes here, make sure I got it right. Yeah, sure. Uh, where a pilot had flown through uh, a jet wash yep. that he couldn't see and fell into a flat spin. Yep. Uh, do you understand those terms? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. you know, Coming out, it's, it's just like exhaust out of a car. You know, you uh-huh. got a, a heavy exhaust coming out the back of the airplane. And when you have that, it takes, uh, when you fly through the jet wash, it, it causes a wind interference coming into the engine and it causes an engine to stall out. Okay. And so th- that will cause it to go into, into the flat spin. Oh, okay. Very cool. Very cool. Yes. And then uh, just looking at the notes too, uh, flat spin, what I looked up online was, I guess, this uh, spinning in an aircraft. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, a spin in which an aircraft descends in tight circles while remaining mostly horizontal. So kind of right. like, yeah, like almost like right. a, uh, like a Frisbee. Yeah. Frisbee. Yeah. It'll exactly. just spin exactly like a Frisbee and, and, and come straight to the ground at a, at a really high speed. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we see in the movie, I mean, cause Allison, I just watched it. So we see that, uh, I guess Maverick gets caught in, uh, uh, Iceman's, uh, jet wash and right. you can't see it. So it was just a, an accident. And then, right. When you're flat spinning like that, it kind of could screw up how the ejection seats work. Mm -hmm. But we see that uh, Goose, like when he tried to eject, he bonked his head and probably died on impact. 
Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, you see there where I think Maverick was pinned forward because of the G forces uh-huh. and he, he couldn't reach the ejection handles. And with, with that goose was able to, and I, and if I remember right, I haven't seen the movie in a while, but the canopy stayed right above the airplane and goose flew right into the canopy. Yeah. And, and ended up, I'm guessing breaking his neck and, and died on impact. And so yeah, I mean, you would think there that's a really unlucky accident. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And for, for two things, a flat spin is pretty rare um, flying through a jet wash, but it does happen. And for a canopy not to get dislodged further away from the airplane also, I mean, you said you had – so in your notes, did that same accident have the canopy accident just the same way as in the movie? Yeah, that's what basically the – All right. Uh, uh, the gentleman, uh, Peter Grew, had said that he had actually seen, I guess, yeah. in the accident he had seen, the, p- the pilot had actually survived, that he'd been okay. But oh, wow, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the one thing I've always questioned in the movie is, you know, once that ejects, how would that be right above the airplane? But if that's actually happened, that's that's pretty unlucky, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, I, w- I mean, I never thought about it too much as a kid, I just like was just so sad, like, oh, sure. oh, yeah, yeah, it's an awful then, part of the movie. <laughs> but then, understanding the character development that Maverick has to go through the guild, and yeah, that they, they wanted to make it look like an accident and that the, the Navy wouldn't fault him at all, but it was right. still just mess with his psyche and the guilt and shame of what happened. So, yeah, uh, I, it was cool to actually going back now to rewatch the movie looking at the the how, how much care went actually went into it which is really sure. yeah yeah and that and that's one thing i've heard about this upcoming movie as well is when they approached tom to do the movie again he was like with all the new technology we have and, and cgi and everything he's like we can't do it that way we have to do it with real aircraft and we they went down to san diego down to miramar where top guns at and Mm -hmm. they they trained all the actors and in the aircraft and got them used to the g-forces and they went and did it and the real f-18s and i think that's what really sells the movie awesome yeah definitely yeah definitely looking forward to seeing the new one and then it's cool just to go back and rewatch the the old one with fresh eyes which is yeah exciting and fun absolutely i'm gonna have to go back and watch it for sure yeah yeah for sure Uh, anything else with, oh, actually there was one other thing with Top Gun that I wanted to mention. So while Allison and I were watching it, we were talking about the concept of, uh, 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 call signs, which again, if if you've grown up flying or being around planes that you have, I was curious if, uh, is that something that's only done with like jet fighters or like would a commercial guy, like the guy flying for Southwest airlines, would he have a call sign? So it's funny. Um, I, I was thinking about this and so in the military, they for sure get call signs um, mm-hmm. in the Navy and the Air Force. They're all going to have call signs. And I've talked to my brother about this because he's mentioned he has a call sign. And I was like, well, why do you have a call sign? And so I guess among pilots, especially, you know, recreation pilots, um, they like to have fun with, with each other and they give each other nicknames based on diff- a variety of different things. And so I was like, what's your call sign? And my brother was like, my call signs crash. And instantly I'm like, that's an awful call sign for a pilot, right? (laughs) You can't have crash as a call sign. And he's a pretty, he's a decent pilot. He's a really good pilot actually. And so I was like, well, how did you get the nickname crash? And I guess at the airport one time, a pilot needed some tools to fix something in an aircraft. And so instead of just bringing him tools, he loaded this huge toolbox into the back of his truck. And when he got to the aircraft, he stopped too hard and the whole toolbox came crashing out of the car. (laughs) <laughs> uh, the, the pickup truck and so all the pilots around him gave him the nickname crash and i was like well you have to explain that to people because everybody's gonna think you crash your aircraft if you have the nick uh, call sign crash but um I, I, it's not a really an official thing outside the military but uh-huh. according to him pilots give each other those call signs as nicknames and so i'm sure a bunch of commercial pilots have call signs i, I mean my brother's a private pilot that just messes around and he has a call sign so um, I think it's something fun for pilots to do to kind of give each other a hard time and have fun with it. So, yeah, it's, it's really cool. In fact, uh, I, another interesting fact that I kind of learned or from the podcast that I was listening to, they mentioned that I guess technically you're not allowed to give yourself your own call sign. Correct. Uh, and Correct. So, some, some guy, I guess he wanted to be called shark, but okay. I guess the other, like uh, his friends or other, uh, you know, pilots in the, the military, I guess gave him the, the call sign minnow. 
to kind of okay. like, you know, bring them down a notch. Like, you know, instead of being like the vicious, ferocious shark, you're going to be the, the wimpiest fish in the, the ocean. <laughs> yeah, see, that's kind of how it goes. You know, they always say you can't give yourself your own nickname. You know, you see these athletes that get these nicknames and it's always given from another competitor or teammate. And so mm -hmm. those are the best nicknames when it comes from somebody else and not yourself, I feel like. So those, those call signs are, I think they're pretty funny when they're coming from somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I guess breaking with the rules then, I mean, if you were to give yourself your own call sign, what do you think you would call yourself? Man. So I thought about this and I actually didn't know. And I ended up talking to Holly about it. And so she technically gave me my call sign that I really ended up liking. Um, I'm a really competitive guy in a lot of things. I played sports and so I was super competitive. I play game when we play games, board games, video games, whatever I get, I get super competitive. And, and so she gave me the call sign competitor and I really liked it. I thought it was a pretty cool uh, call sign. So I think I'd go with that for sure. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Allison had given herself the call sign uh, chaos, which I think kind of, kind of works, <laughs> but it was endearing. And I, and I liked it. I told her I, I probably would have given her that call sign anyways. Yeah. I mean, um, that fit, I think that fits for her. <laughs> uh, I don't know about myself though. So I had to think about it. And you didn't give you a call up, sign? No, no. I, I, I think I should have Allison give me a, a call. Yeah. Sign. You need to have her give you a call sign. Cause okay. I, I, I think she can come up something for something pretty good for you. Yeah, she probably could. <laughs> I see I see her smiling behind me right over here. <laughs> <laughs> she might even have an idea right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else with Top Gun or do you want to move on? Uh, what's your favorite scene in the first Top Gun movie? Uh, you know what? Uh, I really love uh, the opening sequence with the theme song. Like I, mean, I mentioned earlier, okay, yeah. I played the, the, the NES game, the, the Nintendo game of it. And it has like the digitalized version of the theme song, which I absolutely love. Yeah. The theme song is really great. It, but also I even talked about like the, the scene when, you know, he he's picking up on uh, Kelly McGinnis's character and starts singing the Righteous Brothers song. Uh, you lost. Absolutely. That feeling. It's, a, <laughs> it, it's pretty funny when I was in the, the MTC, like my, my MTC companion absolutely loved that movie. So he would just like constantly make quotes from it. Like, yeah, uh, he would say just randomly, like, talk to me, goose. I'm like, what? yeah, oh, I'll try that some Top Gun. <laughs> that, that was a huge quote for a long time. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> So, so many, but yeah, probably the, 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 the bar scene with the, the righteous brothers. In fact, yeah. it's actually kind of interesting. So going back to uh, Peter Pettigrew, the, the professional instructor that they are consultant, they got, he actually has a cameo playing her Charlie's uh, date in the, in the bar at that time. Okay. The, the gentleman. Yeah. That's yeah. actually. Okay. Gotcha. I didn't know that. that. That's a really cool little fact. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. One of my favorite things about that scene is after they're done singing and she has them sit down that the pilots just take the mic and they just keep singing the song and they're just going yeah. throughout the bar. <laughs> like that always cracks me up. I love that part. No, oh, it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, there's nothing else. Let's go ahead and move on to some, uh, some Dodger talk. All right, let's do it. Very Absolutely. cool. So, uh, so team looking good. Te team's been, uh, they're leading their division right now, which is always exciting to see. Yeah. Um, it's still early. We're not even at the mid windway point yet, but um what was the record? Uh, my, my notes might be a little outdated because I, I picked them up on Friday. So I, I don't know how they played today, but uh, they, they, they won were, again today. They so okay. I, what was it? I think they're 34 and 14 now. So let me see here. Okay. I, I had 30, it at 30 yeah, 32, and 14. 32, 32 and 14. Okay. Yeah. 32, 14. Okay. Yeah, perfect. I mean, playing super good. And it, I, I feel like we've been spoiled as Dodger fans lately because, you know, they went through a little streak there where they lost four or five and, you know, and it was rough and we just expect them to win all the time because of how good they've been. Mm -hmm. Baseball's still a hard sport. And so sometimes you're going to go through your rough patches and then you look at the standings and they're 32 and 14, half a game out of the, the lead for the whole league. You know, yeah. they're playing really good baseball right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was interesting to hear a stat. I think it was a few weeks ago that I saw this stat that uh, the Dodgers were leading their division. At one yep. point, also the Angels were leading their division. And then way on the while. East Coast, you had the Yankees and the Mets also leading their respective division. So it was like the yeah. first time that the two teams from L.A. and the two teams from New York were leading their respective divisions, which is kind that, of cool to see. That, that was pretty cool. Yeah, and I think three of the four teams are still leading. I think the Angels fell out a little bit, but I think yeah. the Yankees, Mets, and Dodgers are all still leading their division. So mm -hmm. it's, it's always better for sports when you got New York and L.A. super competitive and when they can meet them hopefully meet at the end of the season that that's the best thing these leagues can ask for for sure 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And then for individual play, I mean, I have some notes here. So uh, yeah. uh, Mookie Betts is leading the the team with uh, twelve home runs. Uh, Trey Turner is leading with thirty five RBIs, and then Mookie has also the most runs at forty seven. So and then uh, 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 Freeman, Freddie Freeman is not too far behind either. So those three have just been really good uh, offensively. And I don't know if you caught the game against Arizona when they won fourteen to one. Yeah, I did. I did catch that game. They, they exploded and. Everybody got involved, and that's always always fun to watch. Um, and I think Mookie's actually at 14 home runs now because he's hit two more. He hit one tonight and one last night. So oh, okay, yeah. He's, yeah that on, makes- he's he's killing the ball right now. Just and you and you look at the way he started the season. I think the first three weeks he was batting under 200, and he's now batting 301. It kind of just shows how hot he's been lately. It's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you had a chance to go to a game with your family? Not yet this year. Okay. Um, we, we do have some plans. We have plans to go with you guys during the summer. That's and, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, we want to catch a few more, but I, yeah, I haven't been to Dodger Stadium, not, excuse me, Dodger Stadium in a long time because, you know, COVID and everything. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to get out there and go, go. Actually, wait, I did go see a game. I saw the Dodgers Cardinals game, the one game playoff last year in the playoffs and that oh that was, that's right that's right that was super exciting um to see chris taylor's walk-off home run for that game that mm-hmm. that was a blast that, that was the loudest i've heard that stadium in a long time and i i didn't talk was, i wasn't able to talk for three or four days afterwards so <laughs> <laughs> i did i did my share of screaming for sure <laughs> oh very cool very cool yeah for for me as well i mean allison and i hadn't been to a game probably yeah. not since 2019 and then COVID hit so yeah but we got to go earlier this season with aguilar's and it was really fun to see the the facelift that the stadium's gone through so yeah, very very uh family friendly now that's right I, I love what they've done in the outfield pavilions and and to be able to before games go out against the center field fence and be able to check out batting practice and they've done a great job with the stadium I, I, and you know, to be able to have the all-star game at Dodger Stadium, I think it's going to be pretty cool for everyone to see what they've done to the stadium. It's been pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it, it was good that, that they did it because, I mean, the uh, Dodger Stadium will always hold a special place in the hearts of all of us fans. But that yeah. being said, I mean, a lot of the stadiums had, you know, gone through the the renovations to make it more family inviting, like, you know, Chase Stadium in particular, I think, yeah. did that. So um as long as the Dodgers don't put a pool in you know because we don't want the, <laughs> the opposing players coming in celebrating in our pool like we did that, to that's them. <laughs> right the, the Dodgers just need to hold on to that fact that they got to go do that in Arizona that was yeah <laughs> that's one of my favorite moments I have a buddy that lives in Arizona he was a mission companion of mine and huge Diamondbacks fan and uh-huh. every time every year I remind him of that pool incident with the Dodgers <laughs> have to give oh, him a hard time cool. <laughs> awesome awesome uh anything else with the Dodgers that you have um, I, I was looking at some stuff about the Dodgers and one stat that s- stuck out to me, but that was kind of mind boggling is their run differential this year. They're, they're a plus 117. And that just kind of shows how powerful their offense is that they mm-hmm. they're outscoring their opponents. 117 by 117 is just pretty impressive, especially when the next closest team and run differential is the Yankees and they're at plus 73. The Dodgers can, Dodgers can put them a bunch of runs up in a hurry. So I, I think that's super exciting. Um, but the one thing I think they still need is another pitcher. Um, you know, you got Bueller and Urias and Gonsolin who are pitching super well. Um, mm-hmm. Anderson's pitching well, surprisingly. That was, that's a really good surprise for the Dodgers. Yeah. Um, but with Kershaw out and Kershaw aging, you know, I don't know how much you can rely on Kershaw. So I, I would expect them at the trade deadline to go and get another starting pitcher for the stretch run and, Man, I, I think they've got as great of a shot to win the World Series that they've had in the past few years. So it should be fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Dave Roberts did uh, guarantee a championship. So he we'll did see. guarantee it. <laughs> he did. Uh, I, I don't always like guarantees from players or coaches, but, you know, it's kind of hard not to guarantee one with the, the roster the Dodgers have. So, yeah. Yeah. And it he also did sign a, a contract extension. So I guess technically there's no accountability. If he doesn't win, <laughs> I mean, he's not going to lose that's, his job. That's right. He's not going to go anywhere. So, <laughs> wh- I mean, the one thing the Dodgers need to do is they need to sign Trey Turner to a contract extension. I, they can't, I they can't so. let that guy hit free agency. Yeah. If, if you, if you can have Trey Turner and Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman locked up for a few years, that, that team's going to be exciting for a long time to watch. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For so, sure. For sure. Yeah. I'm excited to get back out to the stadium and, and go watch a game. And so hopefully we can do that soon. Yeah. Very cool. That, looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if you've been following the, the star Wars celebration news going on. 
Um, I haven't followed it too closely. I've read a few articles on it and um, seen some of their announcements, um, but I haven't followed it super closely. How about you? Uh, I've been f- following it. Yeah, there's been some cool announcements. A lot of it's kind of more like uh, specific release dates for some of the shows that they're doing on Disney Plus. So yeah, uh, Obi Wan just launched. So again, I'm I'm planning to do an episode of the show just talking massive spoilers on that. But we gotta wait for all those episodes first. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm way behind on that. I haven't even watched uh, Boba Fett yet. So. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you get on Boba Fett as soon as you can. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to do that. And so I'm behind on all my shows and movies. I've got them all queued up and. Um, through this summer, I'm going to make sure I catch up and get a, get all that caught up and enjoy that stuff. So Okay, cool. Yeah, so this summer they'll have some new shows launching, the, the Cassian Andor. I don't know if you had a chance to see Rogue One. Uh, yeah, Rogue One. Okay. Yeah, I love Rogue One. Okay, yeah. so so Cassian, one of the characters from that, is getting his own show. And that's okay. going to be uh, July, I'm sorry, August 31st. And that's and then, another uh, Disney yeah. Plus series? Yeah. Okay, that'd be awesome. And then Allison actually had a question for you, or I guess to see if you were old enough to know or heard of the movie <laughs> Willow. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. I'm not. I'm okay, not. okay. I've, Allison I've didn't seen... think you would be. In fact, she's laughing at me. <laughs> that you would. Okay. I've seen the I've seen the previews for the the upcoming one, but I, I am not old enough for. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about it. Okay, uh, Allison wanted me to ask if, if Holly's heard of Willow, if she knows what Willow is. She's nodding her head emphatically, yes. So, okay, <laughs> okay so, so I mean, we were just talking Top Gun. Yeah, so Val Kilmer was in a, a like a fantasy, like Lord of the Rings style movie called Willow. Okay. Um, that was produced by, by Lucasfilm and George Lucas, directed by Ron Howard. So the, the Star Wars people essentially were doing this movie. Yeah. Uh, it, it's kind of a, like a cult status type movie, you know, so right. it, it never reached the same levels of popularity as Star Wars, obviously. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but because the, um, because Disney had acquired all of Lucasfilm, we tend to forget that it also includes Indiana Jones and Wars. Right, right. So, yeah, so they did announce another the, the date. I, I forgot the, the date, but they did announce Indiana Jones 5. Yeah, I saw that. Now, is Harrison Ford going to be in it? Yeah, Harrison Ford is back. So I guess one more Look round. That. <laughs> <laughs> that guy can't give it up, I guess, huh? Nah, nah. <laughs> he had then, to give uh, up flying, though, I think. so. <laughs> yeah, he probably should. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you land on a taxiway at a major airport, that's probably not a good thing. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, he also landed on a golf course one time, right? He did. He did land on a golf course. That was, that was an emergency landing, though. So that was a little bit different. But uh, yeah. the, the taxiway incident, that was just him not really paying attention and not really knowing where he's at and uh-huh. <laughs> thought the taxiway was a runway and landed on it. So, uh, but I think those two incidents back to back, I think that's what ended his flying career. for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then the other cool announcement that I, I saw would, that I thought was really cool was that uh, Jude law is going to star in his own Disney plus show. So a brand new show that was just announced called the skeleton crew. Okay. It's supposed to be the same era as uh, Mandalorian. So I know with Star Wars encompassing so many years of like history, it can kind of be confusing, uh, but this is supposed to be around the same time as Mandalorian. So my guess is there could be tie-ins with that. Yeah, uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. I, I love the Mandalorian. That, and I think they announced the second series for that as well, right? The third, third series. The third series. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah, lots of cool announcements happening with the uh, Star Wars celebration. So uh, looking forward to that for all the entertainment that's coming our way uh, this summer and beyond. So should be yeah, really absolutely. Yeah, I think Disney's doing a really good job with Disney Plus and getting all this stuff out, and it's been really entertaining. I just got to catch up on it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very cool, very cool. Uh, any other talking points that you wanted to bring up? Um, I, I know you're a big Marvel fan. What 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 are you most looking forward to with the Marvel releases coming up? Uh, the, the Thor love and thunder looks really, really cool. Um, yeah. uh, initially I, w- I would have said Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness and I did enjoy it, but, uh, I don't know if you caught it. So like the last episode I did, I talked about it a little bit okay. that I, I did enjoy the movie quite a bit. I thought it was great. Uh, there were maybe a few things I was a little disappointed with, but for the most part, I thought it was really great, yeah. but I do think that Thor and love and thunder might actually even be better. So we'll yeah. see. I, I saw the preview for that and I, I love what they did with Thor Ragnarok and how funny Thor was and, you know, the comedic side of that movie. And it looks like they're kind of doing that same thing. And, and it looks like the guardians are going to be in the movie and yeah. so that could add a comedic value to it. And I, I'm really excited for uh, that movie. I'm, I'm super excited for that and actually excited to see what they do with black Panther too, as well. Um, yeah. That's going to be really interesting. Yeah, definitely seeing the, the two Chris's play off of each other, Hensworth and, and uh, Pratt. I think they have really good chemistry. <laughs> they have great and chemistry. Then, and then uh, Black Panther, yeah, like we, we discussed it briefly. It'll be interesting yeah. to see what they do with 
with the considering the passing of uh, Chadwick Boseman. So, right, right. So I've read an article about it and it sounds like Shuri's going to be the main character in the movie, uh-huh. but they're also saying they don't think she's going to take the Black Panther mantle. So it'll mm-hmm. be interesting to see who will take the Black Panther mantle or what's going to happen with that. So that, that, that's what I'm really excited to see. Coming oh up. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then yeah, just outside of Marvel movies, I mean, obviously Top Gun Maverick, definitely looking forward to seeing that. Yep. But then uh, the next Jurassic World looks really exciting too, with uh, yeah. bringing in the original cast to team up with Chris Pratt and, and the Jurassic World cast. Yeah, what Weston has seen a couple of those previews and he is dying to go see that. So um, he's gotten super into the dinosaurs and Jurassic Park. And so um, we're definitely going to have to check that out. I, I, they, they've done a great job with those movies as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully it's not too scary for him, though. Yeah, that's the only thing we worry about is, you know, he he's a little bit sensitive when it comes to that kind of stuff. And we try to tell him, you know, it could be a little intense and a little scary. And so mm-hmm. um, we'll definitely preview it first before he goes and see it. <laughs> okay, good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny. I think back to when I saw the the first Jurassic Park uh, back yeah. in 93, I would have been 12, 13 years old. And I got really scared of the Velociraptors part. Yeah, but then, like my nieces who are like so little, like I remember going to my brother's house, they were watching the movie and they're actually laughing at the draft. <laughs> I'm thinking, what? I mean, I was terrified when I saw those things for the first hey, time. I was terrified too. Well, the first time I saw <laughs> Jurassic Park, so I, I don't remember how old I was when I saw it, but I was pretty young, I was probably younger than 10 when I first saw it, mm-hmm. and I remember being pretty scared, pretty terrified of it. But yeah, uh, I'm excited for all that coming up. It's gonna be fun, yeah, very good, very good. Cool. Uh, any other talking points for tonight? Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I've listened to almost every episode of your podcast. I'm a little behind on it, but I want you to know that you're doing a, a really good job. I enjoy listening to your podcast. You have some really interesting guests on and it, it's you're doing a, a fantastic job. So, you know, just keep up the good work and um, I'm going to keep listening. You're doing an awesome job. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Stephen. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I mean, this has been so much fun for me, like just chatting with friends about random great stuff. Uh, And I definitely want to do another episode. In fact, Allison really wants to have Holly on to do like a a newlywed type game with you guys. That that would be fun. I I think she would be down and we could have a lot of fun doing that. (laughs) Very cool. Very cool. Okay, well, there's no other uh, points for tonight. I mean, I think we're good to go ahead and wrap up. But uh, yeah. Stephen, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with the airport. Uh, that was really fascinating for me to hear. And then just your your thoughts on the Dodgers and upcoming movies and TV shows. So uh, this was really fun. And I'm, I'm ha- grateful we had the opportunity and looking forward to doing it again in the future. Yeah, absolutely. We should do it again for sure. And then uh, real quick, one more thing. You know, if anybody is out close to the airport here in Upland, um we do have awesome spots to come watch airplanes we have a a, an awesome cafe to come that has a great view of the runway um and we have a couple picnic benches that's a great view of the runway so if you ever want to come out and check it out um come see me i'll give you a tour um come eat at the cafe It's it's a great time it's a fun little local airport and something fun to do with the kids for sure so if anybody wants to come check it out more than welcome to come see it awesome sounds great Okay, well, thanks again, Stephen, and uh, you've been listening to the Casting for Fun podcast. Okay, thanks, everyone.